Sorry about that. We'll get started now. Um, I, I'm Ryan. This is uh, Jauma. This is Vikram. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking today about uh, BGP dynamic routing and Neutron and uh, some of the work we've been doing there uh, over this last cycle. Um, so we're going to touch on a, a couple things today, um, routing cloud network traffic in general, um, giving an overview of the dynamic routing service that uh, we've been putting together, some of the applications of it, and uh, some future work, and hopefully we have some time for some Q&A at the end. Um, by way of background, uh, I just want to kind of put this out there, um, is that uh, the, the work we're doing has not merged yet. Um, we had hoped to get it into the Liberty cycle. It's not quite there. Um, so there's that caveat to what we're talking about today. Um, development is ongoing. Um, so this, uh, this effort started uh, back in uh, yeah, a couple cycles ago. Um, Jauma uh, got some uh, uh, patches up, and uh, we've started iterating on those. And that's kind of taken us to where we are today. Um, so I wanted to uh, kind of start off with just an overview of the, the, the problem that we're trying to solve and, um, and how we think that uh, we can uh, use Neutron to solve some of these problems. So when, when we're talking about routing cloud network traffic, um, you can think of a Neutron network as being essentially a stub network um, with just a default route that uh, it uses for, for, for the Neutron router to send traffic outbound. And uh, that, that IP for that next hop is just read off of the subnet on the, uh, on the network. Um, it's the gateway IP field. Um, that's all great, um, but on inbound flows, um, we've got to communicate the next hop for the Neutron network to the infrastructure somehow. So there's two ways, typically, that you can handle that. Uh, static routing in the infrastructure or a dynamic routing. Um, so you know, first, you can statically route all your tenant networks. Um, this requires some manual configuration of uh, next hops. In, uh, in your infrastructure. Um, it requires some operator intervention as uh, routers, floating IPs, subnets are created, updated, and deleted. Um, you know, prefixes don't move easily between neutron routers. Um, yeah. Or there's dynamic routing, where the operator can configure a routing protocol amongst the infrastructure routers. Um, and what we're doing is we're making Neutron uh, insert routes into that routing protocol, uh, reacting to uh, floating IP CRUD, uh, subnet CRUD, uh, th things like that, so that uh, these tenant networks, as you can see at the, the bottom of the slide, um, have an inbound flow that uh, goes through the Neutron router appropriately. Um, one of the things we wanted to do with this is isolate the Neutron L3 agent from some of these changes. So what we want, want to do is have Neutron have a BGP route server kind of separated from the L3 agent uh, and use that to peer with infrastructure routers. And uh, we, we think BGP is probably the uh, um, the best solution uh, for solving this, this problem. Um, one thing to note here is that uh, as of now, we're targeting use cases where Neutron simply advertises routes to peers. Um, it doesn't learn anything from the infrastructure. Um, we can touch on that point uh, later. Um, so why BGP? I'll, I'll hand over to Jauma to uh, discuss that. <laughs> Can you hear me? OK. okay. So first, uh, there is a clear separation between the data plane and the control plane. We didn't want to overload uh, the data plane of Neutron, because we think it's a node overload. Also, the reduced case is there. Uh, we need to, to advertise routes to different autonomous systems. And OSPF and ISIS doesn't, doesn't handle these use cases. And also that we don't need to expose a big uh, complex uh, routing uh, network. We just need to, to say what's the, the IP addresses or the floating IP or the network IP addresses of the, of the tenant routers. We don't need too much, okay. 
So what are the applications that we have, uh, or features that we have right now with the BGP dynamic routing that we, once it will be merged, as uh, has said, uh, we don't, we haven't merged yet. So first we have a routing model for floating IPs. We can span different uh, L2 networks and have the same floating range in, in both, or, or in all of them. So we separate the, the external network from the floating range as the first step that we want to do in, in Neutron. Then uh, we have directly routable IPv4 and IPv6 external networks. Uh, IPv4 is not so important, but this is uh, focused uh, basically for, for IPv6. Uh, I'll explain uh, later both use cases. And also for DVR, uh, who Ryan is going to explain as well later uh, in more detail, because they have some kind of problem right now to routing, uh, floating uh, IPv6 networks to directly uh, compute hosts. And we can, we can improve the DVR with uh, dynamic routing. And then after that, we can, we can talk about uh, future applications, uh, routed network segments. Well, Ryan is going to talk uh, again, because I, I'm not sure if I understand this part. Uh, and Carl is about here, he's, I will help us. And there is uh, a lot of people interested in L3 uh, BGP VPN. I think a lot of people is going to raise uh, their hands when we are going to, uh, ab about asking uh, for that. And also, uh, we have a particular use case in Midokura that we can, we want to advertise the floating range uh, to using not the tenant, uh, tenant router, routers, but uh, the gateway router. And we can leverage the dynamic routing for that as well. So this is the use case, that, this is the schema that shows the, the use case for floating, uh, floating IPs. So the idea is we have two different uh, L2 networks uh, with its router, and we have a busy speaker which speaks on behalf of each one of the tenant routers. Uh, we speak on behalf of them. We don't have a, a BGP speaker on each tenant because, as you know, the BGP needs to configure, be configured in, in, both, in both sides of the connection. So if we had to configure the, the gateway each time a tenant creates a router, it doesn't make sense to have this feature. So we have a BG speaker who works uh, by itself. It speaks on behalf of the, the tenant routers. This way, the two L L2 networks can communicate to each other using the same floating range because they, they, they have a, a BGP connection between them. If an, uh, an, inbound, uh, if an inbound packet comes to the enterprise network or ISP, can know where to route the packet depending on the, the flat, where the floating IP is, is hosted. This would be one of the use cases that we, right now we can, we can do it. Uh, and the next one uh, involves uh, other scopes. Other scopes is a feature that's not merged yet, but it's some kind of way to define L3 domains. Uh, maybe if I show the, the schema right now, it's, it's easier to understand. So imagine the, the gray faded uh, square is another scope, and other scopes, what they do is to is to put together subnet pools. Subnet pools already exist on Neutron. A subnet pool, what it lets you to do is to define a big pool. Well, I put th this is mainly for IPv6, but I put IPv4 because I cannot imagine myself in the future or right now to see an IPv6 and see what's going on, so bear with me. And, and let's imagine this IPv4 addresses or networks are actually IPv6, okay? To define a, a big range of, of a network, and you can ask to Neutron, give me a new subnet of this subnet pool. I don't mind. I just I want a, a, sm a, a small chunk of this network. And subnet pools guarantee that is not overlapping. OK? So address, pool, uh, address scopes is one step beyond and put together subnet pools. Address a scope will guarantee that subnet, different subnet pools from the same address scope will not overlap. Uh, neither. So that means that anything inside the address scope can be routed. It doesn't need to be nutted. This way, when a, new, a tenant creates a subnet pool, a, a subnet from a subnet pool, we can guarantee that, this, that it's not overlapping with anyone else 
you can route directly the package from the external network from the tenant, from the tenant network. And this is something that for IPv6 is, is so useful. And I put a, a different tenant that's outside the address, the, that is a scope in the, in the schema that has the same, the same range as the same net pool of one of the other tenants, but there is no problem because it, since it doesn't belong to the other scope, the packets that comes from the, to, to the, fr from the inbound traffic to the tenant three the, uh, gets nutted. So this is the difference between the, the two use cases. And then we have a, another use case for, uh, especially for, for middle core and middle net, that we would like to define the neutron router, uh, the, the get going router as a neutron router. So you can, you can put a software defined get going router in the top of the external network. If you could do this, you could be able to configure the VGP speaker to, to you, you could have a, an SDN controller that implements the dynamic routing and automatically uh, advertises the, the networks of the floating, the, the floating range networks. So if, you if your enterprise grows or you want to change or, or, or extend your, your floating range, automatically the internet can, uh, people from outside the deployment can, can directly route uh, packets to the neutron deployment. And that's basically the, the use cases we, we want to cover. So there's a, a DVR application uh, to all this. Um, one, of the, one of the things that you'll uh, probably run into with DVR when uh, you're not using floating IPs is um, how do I get that full DVR um, capability on both outbound and inbound flows um, that traverse the external network uh, when I'm not using a floating IP. Um, right now, y without publishing host routes for each port, basically you're, you're stuck routing inbound traffic through the centralized router and you lose some of the benefits of DVR. Um, this becomes important in IPv6 where um, we don't do floating IPs for um, IPv6 addresses. Um, so one of, the, one of the applications of this is that uh, uh, we can advertise a host route for every port uh, that points the next hop to the compute node. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that uh, we'll be discussing this week at the Design Summit is uh, some uh, refactoring and some additions to uh, some of the L3 APIs in Neutron. Um, and, and one of the things that we can do is uh, separate the, the floating range from the external network itself. So right now it's really just a subnet that you put on the external network. Um, and and kind of what, what that means is in the DVR case, um, your, compute node, your compute nodes have to consume an IP address on your external network. And when you're using floating IPs, we end up pulling an IP address from that range. So when we have IP feed four addresses, um, those are very precious. We want to try and conserve those. Um, now, if we can combine BGP with uh, um, some of this refactoring that we want to do in Neutron, um, the external network really can just uh, be treated as kind of a link local subnet. Um, and so we don't have to consume public IP addresses there. And we can, um, by, by advertising host routes, we can route east-west traffic with DVR and north-south traffic with DVR. Um, so in this example, you can see um, we have two compute nodes, um, two tenant networks on the back end, and an external network on the front end, and um, you know, two instances in, uh, on each tenant network. Uh, east, it, it, with BGP, the, you know, the east-west routing happens as it does today. Um, with the addition of BGP, um, we can speak uh, into the protocol with host routes for each of those instances that, um, uh, that produces a routing table like you see um, in this diagram. Uh, one, of the, one of the challenges with this, of course, is gonna be scalability, right? You're publishing a host route for every port. Um, you know, that upstream router needs to have a, 
routing table that's capable of handling the scale that you want to run at. Um, so that's one of the challenges here. Um, and there may be some creative ways that we can um, may maybe mitigate that. Um, and then we're, we're looking at those as we go forward in, in development. Um, so I'll hand it over to uh, Vikram to talk about the architecture and uh, what this solution looks like today. OK. Uh, so all said, uh, like what we are going to achieve and why we want to do. So now the thing is how we have achieved this. So right now, uh, this, this particular solution is being implemented as an advanced uh, service plugin. And it's not a separate project in itself. It's being developed as a part of Neutron itself. So uh, the idea is uh, we, we will have a Neutron service plugin. We will have a scheduler. And we will have a DR agent. So let me deep dive. So uh, what do you mean by uh, a scheduler? So a scheduler, we can think of an entity which schedules a BGP speaker. What I mean by a BGP speaker, by the way? So BGP speaker, you can think of a, uh, in, think of a uh, entity which, uh, uh, which, which does, uh, uh, which speaks BGP, uh, OK? And you can have a lot of BGP peering sessions uh, belong to a particular speaker. So. Uh, OK, so we, who, who is going to speak the BGP, uh, BGP routing staff? So what, what, we, uh, what we thought is like we, our architecture is very flexible, and we have, uh, we have a driver's plugin where, where your agent can speak to multiple drivers. So we don't depend upon, uh, we don't, don't depend upon actually, actually the driver implementation of it. So our, our interfaces are flexible enough to incorporate Different vendors. So right now, as a POC, uh, we have include like we have uh, done uh, use uh, Ryu as an uh, 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 as a driver for as a BGP speaker. So uh, in the, the current implementation, we have like um, uh, a particular scheduler can schedule a BGP speaker on multiple DR agents, and and the DR agents will talk to each driver, and the driver will do the BGP functionality work. Okay. So going uh, going uh, ahead, uh, it's a it's a sim it's a sample deployment. What could be a sample deployment? It could be like uh, uh, okay, we have two boxes. The above one is your external network, which is outside neutron network. The the below one you can think of it's 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 a neutron network, right? So we can we can figure we can we can find like okay, a BGP dynamic routing agent is there, which has two connections: one to the external network, one to to the neutron, right? So uh, what BGP speaker do is uh, the BGP DR agent, the BGP DR agent will speak to the neutron server using an RPC mechanism, okay? And uh, outside, uh, with the outside router, it, it makes makes a BGP peering session with the driver, using, using the driver, okay? So uh, this is one of the sample deployment. The other deployment could be where, where you have a uh, distributed, uh, distributed archi architecture where you want your multiple DR agents to be deployed. So in this scenario, you have your DR agents running on each of your TOR switches, which speaks to the external network. OK. Great. So uh, all about architecture. So th this slide is about like our potential uh, potential application where we can use it. So this is one thing is, um, as, as Ryan and Jomi was pointing out, uh, the, the current work is only about just advertising a route outside. But it doesn't tell anything specifically like, oh, what kind of route it is, whether it's a VPN route or it's, it's, it's a plain route, right? I just advertise. How about I want to achieve MPBGP using it? I want L3 VPN support using it. Yeah, it could be done. As uh, <clears throat> okay, so as uh, Jomi was pointing out about address scope, so what what we can do is uh, we can we can have like different address scope can can attach different uh, RD and RT's value for advertising routes. So in that case, we can we can achieve uh, the L3 VPN functionality. Okay, so all said, uh, I think most of us knows like why L3 VPN um, um, we need. Uh, it's, it's more like uh, well, it's, it's, it's easier to manage because of MPLS technology. MPLS is widely spread, uh, and most of, the, most of the providers will be loving it. OK, I think I will hand over to Ryan. Yeah, sure. OK. 
Yeah, so uh, kind of piggybacking on um, what uh, Vikram was, was talking about with the L3 VPN, this is not a use case that uh, we have uh, taken on to implement yet, so we have uh, code up for review that we're still iterating on. It really focuses on just the, um, the, the publishing of uh, routes for tenant networks and host routes for floating IPs. Um, we would eventually like to get to the point where we can uh, bake in some L3 VPN support. Um, we're here at the summit uh, talking with other Neutron developers about how we can accomplish that in the, in the next couple cycles. Um, and and some, some future work, um, you know, the L3 VPN we mentioned. Um, yeah, I think this is a good, good place to hand off to Jalma. Um, can walk you through this. Okay. I think another, f another future goal to, do, to coming back to other scopes, it would be to have another scope that only involves te uh, tenant networks and uh, coming back to the, to the schema. You could have other scopes that only have uh, tenant networks, and you could use BGP and PLS to send packages, uh, labeled packages from one tenant router routed to another the tenant router, from the same tenant, of course, uh, using the external network as, as a bare bone uh, network. But before this, I think we have to achieve the discovery of, of the routers, because right now we only we only provide advertising, so the L3 router doesn't learn anything. First, we have to, to achieve the, the learning of the, of the routers that come from another, another routers. And OSPF and ISIS, are, we think that are different, very different uh, protocols that uh, in, in so many ways, from, from concept point of view and also from workflow point of view. So it has been impossible for us to, to define an API that could evolve uh, any kind of routing protocol. So we're afraid that if someone pushes for SPF or ISIS, uh, he will have to start from scratch in another extension. If someone finds the way to put it together, we're uh, happy to, to listen to him. And Bikram is also pushing for route policing support in the, when, when you configure the, the BGP speaker. And these are the... Yeah, yeah, going to find, I can yeah these are it's, some... It's well, the last one. <laughs> that yeah. one is easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, those are the resources, the current, the current patches of the, of the development. And this is how to get involved if someone wants to review patches or wants to push for, for improvements, we are happy to, to listen your ideas. And I think that's, that's all, yeah. Yeah, I'd we'll like Keep to going. open it up for some Q&A. Um, we've got a few minutes, so. Oh, great. Okay. I hope that doesn't mean Thank that we have explained it so much. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Rodrigo, I'm from Brazil. And how many routing agents you plan to support to get high availability? You are okay. planning to do like uh, routing reflectors and these routing reflectors talk with the infrastructure? Yeah, uh, actually uh, for HA, um, uh, our, our initial design right now is um, to keep it very simple. Uh, so. Uh, we, we support like, okay, you, you have your DR scheduler, so one is to one mapping could be there. For each DR scheduler can have one DR agent. But yeah, you can, you can. I think we are, we are extending the support, right? So multiple, multiple DR agents could be there in the scheduler. So uh, if, you, if you talk about HA, so uh, right now uh, we suggest like uh, one is to one mapping could be there. So for each DR agent can have its own replica and working in hand. So how to do it is like, okay, you can have your manual configuration coming up. So when you, when you, when you, when you spawn your BGP speaker, you can tie the same BGP speaker with the two DR agents simultaneously to ensure HA for the time being. Yeah, another way to think of it is um, a BGP speaker is like a BGP process. So 
we want to be able to replicate the BGP process on any number of agents um, through, through the scheduler. So that, that's one of the HA um, solutions that we're looking at. So since the BGP speaker that speaks on behalf of other routers, if you have two speakers that are configured the same, they they're automatically works as an HA. Because you are not routing through the, these speakers, you will only say the next hop of the of the route to the to the peer. Follow up. <laughs> so I think right now it's only a problem of a scheduling. Yeah. Not a scheduling that's yeah. Maybe maybe the performance issues and all like we need to measure. Yeah. Hello. Uh, there will be one one routing uh, one. BGP session per tenant. That's the uh, I see that, but well, that's the that's the, the idea. Well, no. So the um, because if you have a lot of BGP session with the infrastructure router, you have another problem with the infrastructure guys, and and you can't scale. But so 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 the peering doesn't happen per tenant. The happen peering uh, peering happens on a per agent basis. So if you just deploy one dynamic routing agent, um, you're only going to open up one peering session with the infrastructure. Okay. So, so it's it's not a per tenant okay, peering. But I can implement two. You can implement two. Yes. Okay. That's you it. can. Yeah. Uh, limitation on the BGP peers. You you can have number of BGP peers. I don't uh, think we've put any limitation on that. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, we, we haven't tested it yet. Uh, so right now, no limitation. But uh, yeah, we will, we will uh, be checking on that. Actually, it depends on the driver. Right. It depends it on the driver. Yeah, the actually. implementation of the driver. It doesn't depend on the API. So and one it's thing quite is, difficult to answer. Right. And question. one thing is like it's all your APIs are admin specific. So it's admin controlled. So it depends upon. Uh, your topology and what you can support of. But, yeah. but as, a, as an architecture, there is no limitation. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. The, the APIs that we're exposing here are not uh, tenant-facing APIs. These are admin-only APIs. So um, it, it's an admin who configures the BGP processes, the BGP peering, and um, associates the external networks with the BGP process um, to determine what routes are going to be advertised to the infrastructure. So th th these aren't knobs that we're putting in uh, the hands of the tenant. So, so in that, so to maintain two BGP sessions, you would deploy two agents. Two agents of the same. You can or, or, or so, so you don't, you don't have to place the agents with your compute node. So your agents can run on, on any machine anyway. you want. They, yeah. they can also be separated from the network node. And, and actually, I'd um, probably recommend that you deploy it that way. Is uh, so BGP only works in the compute, net, uh, in the control plane. So that means that you don't need to to access to any API, neutron, anything. You only need to put uh, to con uh, in the same network as the RabbitMQ. And then, of course, it has to be connectivity with the peers. But you can put it in any host anywhere. And these two agents, they will talk to each other, right? No. Uh, no. They, they will talk on behalf of, of the tenant, of the routers. So, yes, but between them, there is no Actually, you can do it. If you define each one of the agents as the peer of the other one, there's no problem. C can do it, yeah. You, you define yeah. The, the speaker and you define the peers. And you can, you can do everything you want with the peers of each agent. Yeah. But 
what the routers th they will uh, the routers they will advertise if they have the same the, the same tenant routers it's going to be the same ones. I think you can. Uh, read this, uh, uh, is there any happening. plan for uh, level two VPN uh, like uh, BGP eVPN? Uh, you know, uh, eVPN can be used as VXNet control plane. So, uh, so I think uh, level two VPN is uh, useful. Is there any plan for level two VPN? Uh, actually, uh, there is a, uh, there is a work going on right now in the community. If you might be knowing, which is networking BGP VPN, uh, which uh, addresses this uh, eVPN configuration as well. So um, uh, right now, um, our work uh, we have not thought about it for L2 VPN using eVPN or L3 VPN. So probably uh, we are optimistic about it, and we will have a discussion with uh, the other team to see like how we can converge and uh, make it as a unified API for the user. I don't know if they are here, but yeah, the yeah. guys from Orange are pushing for um, BGP VPN. Yeah, and we try to there. put together. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to have a meeting of the minds here at the summit and yeah. um, try and come up with a common solution if we can. So, if you want okay. to join us, I think it's going to be in twenty. Yeah, right yes. after this. Okay, okay, yeah. uh, I will join. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, currently, the uh, uh, BGP uh, dynamic routing project is incomplete, yeah. right? And uh, uh, it doesn't support uh, uh, BGP uh, listener, right? So, um, I, 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 uh, so uh, is your plan um, that you won't support BGP listener only advertise routes to external network? Uh, how about <laughs> learning <laughs> external? <laughs> That's uh, a great routes. question. Um, <laughs> What we're focused on in, in Mitaka, s just so that we can lay the groundwork uh, for future development, is, is a very uh, narrow set of use cases that um, only involves advertising routes. Now, in the future, there's nothing that we're doing that would preclude us from learning routes from the infrastructure and having Neutron consume those. Um, but at the moment, that, that's, that's not where our focus is. Um, we, we feel like if we, if we focus on a more basic use case and kind of lay some infrastructure, that we can come back and do things like that in the future. OK, OK, thank you. Now, what's the, what's okay. the time? Yeah, I think it's time. Is it time? Yeah, and we can wind up. Right. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, uh, you told us uh, uh, the developing MP BGP it will be enabled, it, uh, so the, the layer three agent will be working as like the like PE routers for the L3 VPN. So in the case that like, you are developing also like, LDP protocols too, the, the, with the MPLS. Uh, okay, so right now uh, uh, what we what we have thought is like. Uh, uh, Neutron can just uh, stamp the routes, okay? Like, oh, this routes belong to this particular VPN, right? And what is RD and RT values associated with this? But uh, in my opinion, um, uh, actually this work uh, doesn't have to do with MPLS. I don't have to learn the label and then encode it using OpenFlow or something, right? So that 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 probably I feel it's it's more 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 from the driver's perspective. So. I can give you the routes, and you determine what you want to do with it. So that is that is how I see things. But uh, I might be wrong. But but as uh, at this particular moment of time, uh, we are just advertising route outside. So I mind that like okay, I can I can stamp the routes with some more useful information, which can help me to achieve uh, more functionality. So not not looking at MPLS right now. Okay, thank you. I, th I think we're out of time. Yeah, I think yeah. we are running out of time. Um, so yeah, okay. yeah. Th thanks everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for your share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.